I am making an updated Gate Guardian deck profile for post Phantom Nightmare. I honestly really like the new Gate Guardian cards. I mean, especially one of them that I think will be the first monster I go over. But I really like how they work, and I think they make the deck a whole lot better. Especially with one of the new spell cards. Or, the new spell card, I should say. And we start off with the monsters, I play three copies of Prince of Pug. Prince of Pug has the effect where you can target a guardian monster you control and have it give it the ability to attack twice during that ba battle phase. Blech. During the battle phase of that turn. And then you can target a guardian monster in your graveyard and then apply one or two effects. We can either or you target a guardian in your graveyard that cannot be normal summoned or set, apply one or two effects, where you either add that target to your hand, or you can add a card that, that mentions or that is mentioned by that monster from your grave or to your hand from your graveyard. Or what was it? Graveyard or banish? I feel like it was one of those two. <laughs> okay, no, you just add from grave to hand. But this is mainly just used for better OTKs or even just being able to recycle uh, your Gate Guardian monsters. As this will only be targeting Gate Guardian monsters and none of them can be normal under set. And then next I play three copies of Shadow Ghoul of the Labyrinth. Shadow Ghoul of the Labyrinth has the effect that you can discard it to then be able to add a... Oh, I always forget the name of the field spell. Labyrinth Wall Shadow from your deck to your hand. And then if an attack is declared while you control a Labyrinth Wall card, you can ban if an attack is declared involving an opponent's monster, you can banish this card from your graveyard while you control a Labyrinth Wall card to then be able to destroy the opponent's battling monster. And you can only use each effect of Shadow Ghoul of the Labyrinth once per turn. Then I play three copies of Labyrinth Heavy Tank. Heavy Tank can be normal summon without tribute, and then once per turn you can activate its effect to take a Suijin, Kajijin, or Song of the Thunder from your deck, banish or grave, place it face up in your spell and trap zone as a continuous spell, and then if you have a wall sh or Labyrinth Wall card in play, you can then destroy one card your opponent controls. And then Heavy Tank cannot attack the turn you use its effect. It's either it can't attack when you use the effect or it can't attack when it's normal summon. Okay, it cannot attack the turn it's normal summoned. I always get it confused. I don't know why, but I do. Anyway, I play two copies of Kazijin, two copies of Suijin, and two copies of Song of the Thunder. All three of these are basically the same monster, where they all share the effect that once while face up on the field, if an, if an opponent's monster attacks this card, you can reduce the opposing monster's attack to zero. They're mainly in here just because they're Gate Guardian pieces. And then the last card I play is one copy of Dark Guardian. Dark Guardian is always treated as a Gate Guardian monster. And then it cannot be normal summoner set. And it must either be special summoned off of Dark Element or by sh shuffling Kazijin, Suijin, and Song of the Thunder from your graveyard or banish back into the deck. And then if you have a special summoned off of the effect of Dark Element, then it gains the effect where it's unaffected by other monster effects and your opponent's spell cards and the effects of the spells. So an example being, if, if you summon this, then uh, Dragoon can't destroy it with its effect, and if your opponent activates Dark Hole, it's a self-inflicted Regeki. However, if you activate Dark Hole in the same situation, it will just destroy all your monsters. And then next, I play one or two copies of K Scareclaw Kishtira. Scareclaw Kishtira has the effect that, uh, oh, how is it? It's just, I forget how you special summon it. Let's see, during, during the main phase, what if I just special scar from your hand? And uh, could you bench Kishtira Scareclaw from your hand or gray? Okay. It, you can special summon it from your hand during the main phase as a quick effect. And then you can banish a Scareclaw or a Kashira card from your hand or grave. And then if it can attack and defense, and if it does use its defense points. And if a Kashira monster battles an opponent's monster, 
then cards and effects can't be used until the end of the damage step. Or is it... I was forgetting specifically how that last part works. Let's see... Okay, it negates that monster's effects till the end of the damage step. So this just helps for getting rid of, around monsters that can't be destroyed by battle or things like that. Then I also play three copies of Kashtira Fenrir. Fenrir can special summon itself while you control no monsters. And then you can activate its effect once per turn to be able to add a Kashtira monster from your deck to your hand. And then when this card attacks or an opponent activates a monster effect, you can activate this card's effect on the resolution. So if you're responding to like something like, I don't know, the Snake Eye Populous effect, you can, at the resolution of it, you can use Fenrir to then be able to banish one card your opponent controls face down. And you can use each effect of Kishira Fenrir once per turn. And you can only special summon it once per turn that way, I believe. And then, same summoning it condition as Kishira. Uh, Kishira. Bleh, Kashtira Unicorn. Unicorn has the f same uh, trigger effect as Fenrir, except you banish a card from your opponent's extra deck face down. And then, once per turn, Unicorn can search for a Kashtira spell or, or a Kashtira spell. Ogre is the one that adds a Kashtira trap. And that's it for the monsters. For these spells, I play two copies of Double Attack Wind and Thunder. Wind and Thunder can only be activated while you control a Gate Guardian monster. Okay, that fixed the lighting problem. But anyway, Double Attack Wind and Thunder has the effect that you can only activate it while you control a Gate Guardian monster. And while you do, you can target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. And then all of the Gate Guardian spell and traps, minus the field spell, have the same grave effect if you can banish them to then take a Kazijin, Suijin, or Song of the Thunder that is in your deck, grave, or banish, and add it to your hand. And I think the only one that might be different is Dark Element. Let's see. Okay, yeah, Dark Element's a little different, but not by much. And I'll check this again, just to be certain. Let's see. Okay, never mind. This lets you add from deck or banish, whereas another one lets you add from, where was it? Yeah, okay, my bad. They only add from deck or banish, so you got that wrong. And then I also play two copies of Fusion Deployment. Fusion Deployment just lets you reveal a Gate Guardian Fusion Monster, in this deck at least, and then summon one of its Fusion Materials from your deck. And you can't summon from the extra deck for the rest of the turn after you use this card, except for fusion monsters. And I'm, let's see what I just thought of. Let's see. My bad, it's not for the rest of the turn. You can only special summon fusion monsters from the extra deck during the turn you activate this card. Like I said, you'll usually be yeah, you'll usually be using this to summon Sangha, Suijin, or Kazijin. Next, I play three copies of Dark Element. Dark Element has the effect where... Let's see. If you have a Gate Guardian monster in your graveyard, you can pay half your life points to then special summon a level 11 or higher Gate Guardian monster from your deck or extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. And then... Let's see, I believe it gave more than just that and the Grave effect. Alright, you get summoning condition. Okay, nope. And then you can banish this card to add one of your Kazijin, Suijin, or Sangha of the Thunder that are banished on your deck and add to your hand. You can only use each effect of Dark Element once per turn. The next, I play three copies of Labyrinth Wall Shadow. Labyrinth Wall Shadow has the effect where monsters can't attack the turn they're summoned unless they're level 5 or higher. And then... Once per turn, you can take a Sangha, Kazijin, or Suijin that's in your deck, hand, or banish. I think it's just deck or banish. Or grave. Place in your spell trap zone as a continuous spell. And then, at the start of your opponent's battle phase, 
you can activate this card's effect to destroy one tactician monster they control that has 1500 or less attack. That effect is never used, so I understand why the card has that effect, just as a reference to uh, Season 1 of Yu-Gi-Oh! when a Labyrinth wa- or La- Labyrinth Ghoul destroyed a, uh, what was it, Beaver Warrior. Why am I moving on the walls? As its art also depicts. And then next, I play three copies of Kashtira Birth. Birth has the effect that you can normal summon level 7 monsters without tributing. And I don't remember the rest of its effects beyond that. During your main phase, you can special summon one of your non XZ's Kashtira monsters that's banished on your graveyard. And your opponent takes a spell card or the effect of a spell, and you control a Kashtira monster. You can target three cards in your opponent's grave, banish them face down. And you can only use each effect of Kishira Birth once per turn. This is honestly just in here so that if so that if you have a Gate Guardian piece that in your hand that's doing absolutely nothing, then at the very least Birth will let you normal summon it so that it's at least on the field. Because all of the Gate Guardian monsters, with the exception to one, all summon by banishing the materials from the field. And then lastly, for the main deck, I play three copies of Pot of Prosperity. Pot of Prosperity lets you banish up to six monsters from your extra deck face down to then excavate cards from the top of your deck equal to the number banished. Add one card to your hand and put the rest at the bottom of the deck in any order. And your any battle damage your opponent takes for the rest of the turn is halved. And I believe it has another thing where... Let's see... For the rest of the turn, if this card resolves, any damage is halved. You cannot draw cards the turn you activate this card, so that was its other thing is when you activate this card for the rest of the turn, your opponent takes half damage, and then you cannot draw cards during the turn you activate this. Is it during or after? I always forget that, even though I just read it. Okay, it's the turn, so. If you draw this off of something like Pot of Extravagance, then Prosperity won't be able to activate, but that won't happen. And at, least, at the very least, it won't happen in my build. And that is it for my Gate Guardian deck profile for the main deck. I almost entirely forgot the extra deck. That would have been bad. That's it for the main deck. For the extra deck is really simple. Just three copies of Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon. And it's just... It can't be destroyed while it has materials, and it burns your opponent 500 whenever it activates a card or effect. And it does not activate either, so... Yeah. If, it, if your opponent has a Draco's Topelia and they put a counter on this, it'll still burn for 500, because it doesn't actually activate to burn. I think. Let's see... So yeah, if anyone know, watching knows whether or not it actually activates, let me know, because I, because if it doesn't activate, then I may have accidentally cheated one of my friends with uh, Aroma Jar at one point, as weird as that sounds. Anyway, I play three copies of Gate Guardian of Wind and Water. Wind and Water is a twice per turn, once per chain spell trap negate. And then if it leaves the field, this is the effect that all of the Gate Guardian Fusion monsters share, then you can summon one of its materials to your field. There's only one Gate Guardian Extra Deck monster that's different. So I'll ignore that for the next two. Next is Gate Guardian of Thunder and Wind, which I play three of. This is a once per turn add a spell trap in your deck to your hand that mentions Suijin, Kaizen, or Song of the Thunder. So this can actually add Dark Element. So, one thing I might do is put, cut Dark Element to 2 and add Called by the Grave. It's just a thought. And then next, I play 3 copies a Gate Guardian of Water and Thunder. Water and Thunder has the twice per turn, once per chain of being able to activate its effect. To target one monster your opponent controls and reduce its attack to 0 until the end of the turn. Or as I believe it's till the end of the turn. It might be a permanent thing. Let's see, tire trade attack to zero till the end of this turn. And the way that these three fusion monsters 
work with summoning their materials is they just have to leave because of an opponent's card. So if they're tributed, uh, fused, banished, uh, destroyed, as long as they leave because of an opponent's card, they trigger. The only time they won't is if they're returned to extra deck by something like Compulsory Evacuation Device. I am sad that that's how that works, but oh well. And then lastly, I play three copies of Gate Guardian Combined, or Gate Guardians Combined. This has the thrice per turn, I don't remember if it's once per chain, of uh, being able to, you know, card or effects activate the target's aim card you control, you can negate and destroy that card. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, yeah, you can activate it three times in one chain, technically. And then if this card leaves the field because of an opponent's card, then you can special summon a Gate Guardian monster that is, I believe, level 10 or lower from... Let's see, what was it? A level 11 or lower Gate Guardian monster from your deck or extra deck, ignoring the summoning conditions. So technically what you, you normally would do is, if this is destroyed, you summon uh, either Water or Thunder or wind, Water and Wind. And then... When those die, you summon one of your gate guardian pieces. Or if you want to be really funny, if this dies, you then summon the original gate guardian. Don't know why anyone would play the original gate guardian. It's really bad, as it's... It's only effect is its summoning condition. That's the only reason it's bad. But that is the, the actual end of my gate guardian deck profile. If you have any ideas what I can do to improve the deck, any ideas that decks like to see face each other, such as gate guardian versus dark magician, or decks like to see be made in the future. Feel free to comment down below, and thank you so much for watching.